Poets and Pancakes written by Ashoka Mitran The makeup department of Gemini Studios was housed in what many believed to be Robert Clive's stables. The department Ashoka Mitran mentions uses a brand of makeup nicknamed as Pancake. The makeup room contained a lot of bright lights which made the actors uncomfortable. The makeup department Ashoka Mitra notes humorously was an example of pioneering national integration in action. The makeup department also comprised a strict hierarchy where the chief makeup man was followed by his senior assistant, junior assistant and finally the office boy. The chief makeup man and his assistants usually applied makeup to various actors in the movie. The office boy on the other hand was responsible for applying makeup on the extras. He had once aspired to become a star actor or screenwriter, director or lyricist but ended up as a makeup boy. The office boy's frustrated hopes would often bring him to the author's tiny office. The author's job was to cut and store newspaper clippings on a wide variety of subjects. Since his work seemed insignificant, the office boy would usually come into his cubicle to vent his feelings. Kotha Mangalam Subbu considered the boss's right hand man at Gemini Studios was usually chosen as the target of his anger. The author clearly disagrees with the office boy's perceptions and gives a brief portrait of the life of Kotha Mangalam Subbu. Although he performed minor roles, his performance was better than the lead actors. He was also an incredible poet but was known more of his films than his novels. Subbu belonged to the story department which housed the poets of the studio and the legal advisor. Though a legal advisor, he was considered a lawyer by most people. Unlike the khadi clad poets of the department, he was always dressed in pants, a shirt and sometimes a coat. Once he brought about the downfall of an actress by recording her temper tantrum on set. He lost his job when one day the boss, that is the owner of the studio, decided to dissolve the story department. Ashoka Mitra now comes to the poets of Gemini Studios. Gemini Studios hosted a variety of poets who were believers of Gandhi and averse to communism. The poets' aversion of communism reflected the overall philosophy of Gemini Studios. This led to Frank Bushman's modern rearmament army performing to plays Jothan Valley and Forgotten Factor at the studio. The Gemini family impressed by the plays imitated the sunrise and sunset senses as depicted by the MRA. Eventually the author learned that the MRA was a kind of counter movement to international communism. After a few months, the Gemini Studios was visited by an English poet. S.S. Vashan, the studio owner, welcomed the guest, whose identity was unknown, by delivering a long speech. It was followed by the poet's speech. However, people could not understand the poet due to his unfamiliar accent. Thus, the poet and the reason for his visit remained an unexplained mystery. From a glimpse of life at Gemini Studios, Ashoka Mitran now provides a brief glimpse into his own. One day he came across an announcement about a short story contest in the Hindu. The contest was organized by a periodical named The Encounter. On seeking information about the periodical, the author discovers that his editor was Stephen Spender, the same English poet who had visited the Gemini Studios. In conclusion, he talks about discovering the paperback edition of The God That Failed a few months after his retirement. The book was a compilation of six essays by six eminent writers who described their experience with communism. Stephen Spender was one of the contributors to the book. He realized right away that his boss was not interested in Spender's poetry but his views on communism.